is more socially accepted than ever. Young, old, Canadian, whatever. People love to game. Yeah, can I help you? Yeah, I'm, uh, looking for my little brother. It's about your height, a little bit leaner. Nathan, I'm in a lot of trouble here. Please welcome from Sony Computer Entertainment, Sean Layden. Uncharted 4, amazing. And if that's the way we're starting the show, you can imagine what the rest of the show is going to be like today. <laughs> we're, we're so glad you've joined us here for the second annual PlayStation Experience, taking place in the heart of the San Francisco Bay Area, which is home and headquarters to PlayStation in America. and we'll have the most PlayStation VR content we've had at any show to date. And of course, lots and lots and lots of game announcements. Speaking of announcements, uh, no announcement has had more amazing fan reaction uh, than the reveal of this trailer. Let's take a look. Tonight we have a very special treat for everyone. Oh my god! Mid car looks exactly like that. There's Ben! There's fucking Ben! Crying guy, if you're out there, don't worry, there's some more. Uh, and are you ready for a little bit of it? Let's see it. I don't see why we brought a Shinra. from Square Enix, Yoshinori Kitase, and Tetsuya Nomura. Thank you. Uh, Square Enix no Kitase. This footage only represents a small part of the game, but we hope you enjoyed it.
Uh, fact, PC re-release of Final Fantasy VII is actually available today for PS4. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. you guys got your hands on one of those awesome limited edition PS4s. I knew you'd be here. So let's take a look at some of the cool moments you guys have been doing in game. Yeah. Is any fans of Borderlands in the house? Awesome. Awesome. Man, oh, oh, I'm so thrilled to be here. And it's created by the guys that made Battleborn. The team and I are back, or Borderlands, the team and I are back at home. The team and I are back. So we'll have a bonus character for you for free. Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome, all the way from Tokyo, Japan, Capcom's own KO commander, the street fighting, all night and undisputed cheese free champ, the head honcho of Hadouken, Yoshinori Ono. I can't do it here myself. One word. Have a fun. All right. <laughs> the final launch character of Street Fighter V named Fang. This is the first time we've been able to show a character without a leak, so I'm really happy about that. <laughs> so the next information has not been leaked yet, so please open your ears and listen carefully. <laughs> Something's missing. So, to the unique universes of No Man's Sky, we're so... Guys are the best. And I'm really excited to show you this exclusive first look at a brand new trailer for Day of the Tentacle Remastered. Yeah. Double Fine is happy to announce that we are remastering Full Throttle and bringing it to PlayStation 4 and Vita. It's one of our biggest announcements since, uh, well, since earlier this week when we announced Psychonauts 2 on Fig. Thank you. If you can't wait, for Psychonauts 2, we do have something special just for you guys. Psychonauts in the Rhombus of Ruin is a completely unique standalone Psychonauts adventure experienced in a revolutionary new way. VR is the perfect way to experience the surreal, psychedelic mental worlds that Psychonauts like to explore. In Psychonauts, the Rhombus of Ruin, you'll be unleashed in Rasputin's psychic powers, pyrokinesis, clairvoyance, telekinesis, all with just a glance and exclusively on PlayStation VR. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> Can't wait. Tim Schafer, ladies and gentlemen. And now that we've gotten the Tim Schafer shit show over with, <laughs> let's get back to the announcements.
This next game is making its console debut on PS4 and Vita. I'm also excited to announce that we're working with Square Enix Montreal and Freema Studios to bring the fan favorite title Hitman Go to both PS4 and Vita. But if that wasn't enough for you, we are bringing Yakuza 0 to the West on PlayStation 4. Let's take a look. And I'm glad to announce that we're working with SNK and Code Mystics again to bring Last Blade 2, the legendary Neo Geo fighting game, to both PS4 and the Vita. And in the world of SNK fighting games, I am extremely excited to present the next look at a PlayStation 4 console exclusive. The King of Fighters 14. Take a look. I'm so happy to see so many people here. I was talking to a bunch of you online earlier. I know a ton of you folks came cross country to be here. It's an honor, quite frankly. And I love this PlayStation experience. I love that we can do this kind of stuff. I love that we get to see all these games. I love that we get to talk to folks like you, folks I normally only deal with on Twitter. Yeah, I'm excited to say that it's out today. Uh, <laughs> all right. It's launching at only $2.99. That's the cheapest it's ever been on a console. Full cross-buy with PS4 as well. Uh, and you never played it, Sid. I never did play that one. I love Transistor, so it looks like a good moment to jump in. We also do have a special treat for those of you who are gracious enough to join us here in San Francisco at PlayStation Experience in the flesh. If you came here, you're going to get a copy of Nuclear Throne and The Bit Trip for free. Next, I want to talk about a franchise that's been hungry. She's been hungry for a return to PlayStation for a long time. And great news, Fat Princess Adventures will also be available today, right after the show. Check it out. And now, I'm pleased to welcome my good friend, Ted Price, onto the stage to show you a new demo. Thank you. Hey guys, it's awesome to be here. So, you guys know Ratchet. Back. <laughs> Today, we are finishing up Ratchet and Clank for the PlayStation 4, and a Ratchet and Clank movie is being prepped for wide release. Well, Ratchet and Clank are going to make their big screen debut in North American movie theaters on April 28, 2016. But if you have a PlayStation 4, your wait's going to be even shorter. The game, based on the movie, based on the game, will debut on the PlayStation 4 on April 12, 2016. Thank you guys very much. So, you guys ready to get virtual? <laughs> that's right. that's cool. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's not fair. All right. <laughs> oh, there we go. All right, how about I set one up right in front of me and just kind of whack it over oh, here, too? Yes. But I, <laughs> I can. Can I do a bank shot? That's kind of actually kind of tricky. Let's see. And, oh, oh so close. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. You do get more shots if you use a bank shot, or oh, more points okay. if you get a bank shot. Fine. Check out this <laughs> legendary masterpiece of light and sound. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you. 
crap, what was that? What was that? I don't know what it looked like out front here, but from backstage, that was some crazy shit. That was some super... <laughs> that was actually Mizuguchi-san in the suit. And, yeah, and just so you know, that was fully vibrating, fully laser light suit. Vibrating for his and or her pleasure, depending on yeah. the story. <laughs> Who is looking forward to PlayStation VR? Yeah. Right? That's pretty good. That's right. Let's take a look at the exclusive reveal of Eagle Flight. Beautiful. Wow. I love the F2 player there as well. This next one is from our very own Santa Monica Studios. Any fans of Santa Monica? Yeah. So uh, it's something about being able to transport people to these virtual worlds. I think it uh, encourages developers to be a bit more crazy, wacky, and creative. Super right? wacky. And if you like wackiness, our friends at Alchemy Labs are bringing Job Simulator to PlayStation VR. Job Simulator transports players in 2050, where robots have taken over jobs that you and I do. Jobbot was created to teach humans of the future of what it meant to job, and his lessons up being up bizarre and hilarious in VR. He's coming to PlayStation VR with an exclusive VR experience for our platform. There it is. Yeah. Now, Assad and I were actually able, outside of our regular jobs, during our job, we went and tried it out, and you can see some of the sweet moves that we made. Got super dumb, real quick, real you, dumb. You know what, so I'm, I'm clearly drinking a cup of coffee with a donut. I, don't, I have doing? no idea what Adam's doing. <laughs> Who can say? You know, you know what he's doing? He's casting the Assad Kizzlebash Harry Potter I think that's what spell. I'm doing. I think that's I'm what doing. he's doing. Here's what we're going to post those online, and you guys, let's have a caption contest. I have no yeah. idea what you're doing there. No, don't. Please don't. <laughs> In addition to experiences built right from the ground up, we've also seen games with VR modes that take on an already fun game, add VR into it, and transform it into a completely different experience. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no goblin. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the start of 100 Time. Prepare the other pilot. Whoa, that's awesome. How cool is that? You know, uh, 
Again, what I love about it is the mysterious title where you have no idea what the game's about. I think it's 12 foot werewolves that play foosball. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so before we leave VR, there's one other game that's coming to PlayStation 4 that's got a fantastic VR integration. It's a franchise I personally love. I remember staying up all night trying to unlock this Easter egg. It was a Falcon Fighter. Do you want to tell them what it is? It's one of my favorite Bandai Namco franchises, and it's celebrating its 20th anniversary, making a triumphant PlayStation return with a great VR integration and exclusive to PSVR. <laughs> he likes it. <laughs> PSX is really my most anticipated show of the year, and I want to take a minute, go a little bit off script, and just thank every single fan that's here in the audience for taking your big, long trips from across the country, from different countries, from different towns, and coming and joining us here today. Pretty amazing. I'd love to give yourself a round of applause, guys. Thank you for that. Thank you. And I, I want to take one second. There was this, uh, this guy in Montreal, 18-year-old guy that saved up for a couple weeks to come to PSX. And he couldn't make it. His mom at the last minute, 18 year old kid, said, it can't, You can't go. So, to Brian Ferreira in Montreal, Quebec, this is for you, buddy. Let's talk about some more video games. So, our partners at Activision and Bungie lost, launched an amazing new title in a Destiny universe in September. Racing League is playable right here on the show floor today. Yeah. It's my warlock right up there. We're my warlock people. Yes. That's what's up. Don't nerf it, Luke Smith, or else for the love of God, I'm going to hunt you down. Now, Level 5 is known as one of the premier RPG developers. Please enjoy the worldwide premiere of this exclusive PlayStation 4 title. King of Ding Dong Dell! <laughs> How amazing does that look? Pretty awesome. I want to say that Epic Games is thrilled to be here today on the PlayStation stage. Play some games. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Uncharted 4 panel at PSX 2015. 
They weren't booing the game, they were booing that I didn't take my shirt off. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the folks that make Uncharted possible. Please, a round of applause. Oh, Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, we have a jam-packed panel for you in only 38 minutes and 56 seconds to get through it all. So the first question on the table is, do you want to see new footage? Yes. Sometimes a woman needs to be slapped. <laughs> so wrong. Uh -huh. <laughs> so wrong. Here's my question, and this is something I just noticed. <laughs> it's up there on the big screen. I look down at Laura. I look at the big screen. I look down at Laura. Laura, white. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> what? Nadine from South Africa. Black. He's quick, isn't he? <laughs> that... I do have a degree in journalism. <laughs> That is not what Laura told me. I did not know that about oh, that. Oh, really? Well, you know, we uh, don't see color. <laughs> <laughs> Should any of us? Interesting. Uh, we talked about this earlier. Uh, I was up last, late last night reading NeoGAF, as people always warn me not to do. <laughs> NeoGAF. Uh, and a lot of people were talking about that, so I uh, wanted to give some background to, to that thing. Uh, so when we cast this character, we had no final look for the character. We just had kind of who she is, the army she runs, and just she's from South Africa. So we sent out a big kind of casting call to all sorts of agents, uh, including Laura's agent. Uh, so we, we brought into addition black actors, white actors, American actors, actors from South Africa. Uh, and they were all, uh, not all, some of them were not so good, but a lot of them <laughs> were really good. Uh, and then Laura walks in, and I'm gonna embarrass her a little bit, and just kills it. And I'm there with a casting director, with an editor, with my co-writer, Josh Schur, and we're all just floored at how good she was. Uh, and there was no question in our mind, that's Nadine. I'm gonna make her cry. I'm gonna keep you going are? until she cries. <laughs> uh, so then, you know, going back to the office and looking at all these character designs, and we have this really awesome uh, character concept artist, Ashley Swodowski, came up with the look of the character that's very close to what you're seeing in the game. And I was like, this is awesome. How often do you see a character of color like this that's ripped? Um, and I was like, this, this also is Nadine. Uh, and somebody on the team said, well, you know, you have a white actor, it's a black character, are you sure you want to do that? You're inviting controversy. Hmm. And I said, well, you know, you might be right. Let's, let's hold off on maybe making, uh, on changing it, because some people were saying we should, we should change the look of the character. Let's get in the game, let's see it all together, and then make the call. So character is modeled, we're working on hair, I'm showing them my curly hair, like you gotta get the curls right. <laughs> uh, and then at some point we finally get to review a scene, and that's like months later, we were capturing scenes meanwhile. I get to see it, uh, and you know, I no longer see Laura's performance, I no longer see like the, the character, the concept art, I don't see the hard work of all these animators, these modelers, everything it takes to bring this, this um, scene to life. I see Nadine, and I, that combination just felt so right, and like we all fell in love with that character. And I was like, you can't change anything. This is this is who this character is, and that's that to me is what's so awesome about our medium is your outward appearance doesn't matter at all. If it did, Troy couldn't play Joel in The Last of Us. Right. Ashley Johnson couldn't play Ellie. Like in the movie version, they can't play those roles, and they played them to perfection. Um, <laughs> And likewise, there's another really important character that I can't bring up that's in, in Uncharted 4 that... Nate and Elena's kid. Uh, is, <laughs> that is uh, a white character played by a black actor. And, and, that's, and again, that's what's awesome about our medium. And that was, in that case, that was the best choice. And I felt like if we were to change these characters, we would be operating out of fear of something that's outside the game. And these were the best calls for the Uncharted 4. So I stand by that. 110% and I wouldn't change anything and I'm so proud of Laura's performance and I hope none of this takes away from what she was able to accomplish. Yay, Laura Bailey! Oh man, thanks man. And Travis, Laura's husband and I are, are, are best friends and we have this relationship of very much, even though he's younger than me, he's, uh, in, in our life situations, he's very much the older. And for me, with Sam and, and Nathan, it's very much of, a, a situation where someone has never moved past a certain point in his life and the younger has become the elder and the elder has become the younger. I walked out of that thinking, well, there goes another one, next. <laughs> and then I got the call <clears throat> that I got it and my agent was all excited and I went, oh, great. 
<laughs> a job. It's always nice. Get a job. <laughs> and then she said, do you realize how many people in town would kill for this? Really? Why? Now I know. I'm a little slow. I was never the brightest bulb on the string. Okay. All right. Let's try this again. We still need these. Great. It's a perfect example of what we do going against type. <laughs> I'm playing an old guy. You know? <laughs> and uh, I'm obviously not an old guy. <laughs> I, would, I would say this role um, probably, I mean, it defined my career. I mean, not just video games. I mean, I don't like to look at it in terms of that. Yeah. Know, people say, oh, you're voiceover, or you're just video games, or you're just animation. It's, it, it, it's changed everything. I mean, I've, I've been able to move on to uh, on camera jobs because, oh, you're, you play Drake, you know, they, it's, and the great thing about this motion capture and what we do is, it's everything. Yeah. It, it's, it's like well-paid theater. I mean, you're just <laughs> like, you're in there and, you, and you're, you're also, that theater-like um, uh, experience is shot out to millions of people across the world. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I knew that we had something really special here, but it's, it was when I was, went over to Europe and I got to meet people in London and Germany and Spain and France and all over the world and they play this game and they know who we are yeah. uh, specifically. No offense, just because we were in the first three. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they were like, oh yeah, you know, they, when you see Italian people, oh, they say, Drake and the Miz, Sally, oh, Sally. And they do the voice <laughs> and you're like, yeah. And, 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 you, and they're not even playing our versions, you know, they may sure. be playing the localized version of the Italian dub, but they know who the original Sully and Drake are. And when you see that this thing has just blown up all around the world, it's humbling. It's uh, it's amazing. And, and it, yeah. And, and Richard and I, have, we talked about it today at lunch. It's still the best job we've ever had. And we're, I mean, I think I speak for him. We're blessed and grateful for every single moment of it. So, Neil keeps telling me they're gonna hit this launch date. So I assume <laughs> you keep saying it, right? It's not, you're gonna hit it? Uh-huh. Okay, just making sure. It's great, uh, we have, we have, the great thing is, from here over, I have nothing to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> but so that just, said, is I assume. <laughs> we do this. They, they've wrapped on you, right? You've finished off being Nathan Drake. I think we have a couple of VO pickups we might have. But is, is it like, so have they done like the big production at the end and the clapping and everybody gets all sad? Yeah, yeah, they did that. They gave me a bottle of bourbon, whatever that meant. Sobbing. <laughs> they, said, they, gave me, they gave me a jug of bourbon. They said, congratulations. I'm like, should I go kill myself with this? <laughs> <laughs> it's never going to get better. Drink it all. <laughs> Uh, and I, I did, but I lived. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had, we had a last day of shooting with Nolan, and everyone on the set got kind of emotional. Like, you have to understand, like, we've been with this character for 10 years now. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's kind of heartbreaking to, yeah. to, to say goodbye. And, and what I told Nolan, I mean it for, like, the rest of the cast, and what Amy did, and what, like, the whole team did. Uh, I think they not only changed what, how we do things at Naughty Dog, but the entire industry. Yeah. I think people, the way people approach story and the way, and all these are lessons, you know, when I got to work on Uncharted 1 and 2, I took on to The Last of Us, and now I'm like, uh, I feel so honored to come back to this franchise and, and, and be able to help out. Uh, yeah, I'm in awe of what you guys do. So, so there, I'm gonna make you cry. <laughs> yeah, good, <baby. laughs> it has been It's been amazing. Yeah. And Greg, and you know, and let's, Pass it over to Greg. You, this is a guy who's been a, a, a supporter of, of Uncharted from the time Champion. it started. Uh, I really went out on a limb being like, Uncharted's good, guys. No, no, no. <laughs> Give it a chance. I yeah, don't know no, why. But, but in all seriousness, I mean, we, uh, yeah, we did something. You know, we, I, I often say, we, there's no such thing as Uncharted 1. 
we did Uncharted Drake's Fortune, and you just kind of like, hey, let's make this game, and it's it'd be cool. And I, and the funny thing is, that's when I also did a few other games that became popular, and everyone's like, he sounds the same in everything. <laughs> and I was like, ah, oh, I didn't know it was gonna be all big, big good hits. And then, but then Uncharted 2 came out, and then things really took traction. And I remember one of the first, I, I remember, I think it was your show. It was like, we want to interview about Uncharted. I'm like, really? Okay, uh, that's cool. And and you know there I am with Greg Miller and it's Game Over. I'm like, yeah, Beyond, let's do it. <laughs> beyond. And you know, so uh, so thank you for all your support. And the greatest thing, the greatest compliment I think that any actor, whether it be in this side of the industry or others, the greatest compliment that an actor can receive is to be thought of by producers and directors as a solution to a problem. And in this case, the problem was we need someone that we can trust that we can count on to come in and really own this character and bring it to life. And there's people that can have really good performances, but there's a point when you can just act good and then you can dance and you can make decisions on the fly and really add some subtlety and nuances to characters. And that's why she continues to work. Oh, stop, stop, stop. No, 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 no. It's, it's not all about Laura, but this, you is, guys. this is the same reason. I mean, the people, all of the people that are on here, Greg included, the reason why is because, <laughs> I'm serious. The reason why Greg is because is this is our passionate pursuit. This is what we love. This isn't a stepping stone to something else. This is what we want to do with our lives. And we're ready to give our lives over to it. Because at the end of the day, all that we want to do is make a game that we want to play. And that's in every heartbeat of every moment that we make this game, whether it be in a cutscene or a level design or scoring it or shading it, like you said, or whatever it is. So that's the reason why I think you're so good at this is because you're a gamer at heart. You love the franchise. And I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> Yay, Laura Bailey. Yeah. What's up, everybody? Welcome to PSI Love You XOXO Live at PSX 2015. I am one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside, he only does everything, Colin Moriarty. It's good to be here. Thank you. I help. This Sorry. is like uh, old po podcast Beyond. You never heard of that one. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Beyond! <laughs> uh, you know, I held it together at the Game Awards. Didn't you, cry. You're gonna cry? So close already. Yeah. So many times already. Well, I, I want to do something before we begin. Uh, did, did everyone see Greg's speech a couple of days ago? <laughs> but more importantly, the person I'd like to thank is Nicole Tan. Nicole Tan is an environment artist for Crystal Dynamics. I have never met Nicole Tan. I beat Rise of the Tomb Raider this weekend, saw her name go through the credits, along with dozens of other names I didn't recognize, and this happens all the time. Every time I finish a game, hundreds of names I don't know. So today, I'm the trending gamer. I am a duly elected representative of you, the gamers. So on behalf of the gamers, I want to say thank you. Thank you to everyone in this room that makes video games. Thank you to everyone at the home right now, directors, producers, writers, animators who make video games. Hell, thank you to the guy who's working on a Maya project right now and won't see this till it's on YouTube tomorrow. We all know that making a game is not a glamorous life. It is long hours. It's time away from your family. And no matter what, when the game's out, someone on the internet is going to be mean to it. I'm sure it comes down every day. Somebody says, is this worth it? And I want you to know that on behalf of the millions of lives you change, it is worth it. Thank you for making games. I would not be the person, we would not be the people we are today if it wasn't for video games. So thank you, each and every one of you who do, does this, makes video games. Thank you for your art and know that we are forever in your debt. I want, I want everyone to give Greg a standing ovation for that speech. Yeah. Now, for... oh, Since the Uncharted panel. 
No, I mean, like, that was a special moment for me, obviously, but I mean, the main thing about it for me was getting to speak for you guys. You know what I mean? Like, uh, that, that was why I did what I did at the Game Awards was the fact that that was our opportunity to thank them. It's never lost on me that it's not fair that I have 200 whatever thousand Twitter followers and these people who make these games and do these amazing things don't have that kind of recognition. So thank you for backing me and amplifying that message. I love you all. Yeah. And Tom Paul, because I don't know. Now, do we, we need to tell everybody they need to memorize this, right? Right, memorize. The idea is that we do this and then at PSX we do it as a giant cult and everybody's really, really terrified. Hail Shuhei, full of grace. Has her eyes with thee. Blessed art thou amongst gamers, and blessed is the fruit of thy Sony Worldwide Studios. Holy Kudaragi, Father of PlayStation, pray for our trophies now and at the hour of the next PSN outage. Amen. Now, anyone who grew up Catholic like we did yeah. knows that that was way too fast. Way too fast. Uh, None of the pomp and circumstance no. I expected. Then they got to bring the smoke out, and right. it's like oh, a whole. The smoke. That's when you know it's up. It's a whole, that's when, it's a whole fucking Clements, thing. That's when a Catholic ceremony is popping off. <laughs> if we didn't announce Ben Game this, you know, today, you're going to you know, go up to and uh, burn down the whole state of the uh, <laughs> I think I said that. Maybe you incriminating? No, you like Vita? Who loves the Vita? Now here's, here's, here's what always interests me about this stuff. We do this, we go crazy, we yell about the Vita. A show of hands, who doesn't have a Vita? Boo! <laughs> well, all right, you don't, you don't, come here, You're girl. the problem. You come here. You, sir, in the white, come here, in the PlayStation jacket sitting on the floor, and you in the Colin 20XX jacket, come here. Come here, though. Do I, come here. How am I gonna talk to you over there? Oh dear. I'm fine, everything's oh fine. Why don't you have a Vita? Careful, you gotta Greg. speak into my neck. I don't have money? I don't you like that you at can't, all. You can't bomb my panel, I'm not gonna allow it. You're dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna go in. <clears throat> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There you go. There you go. Enjoy, enjoy. You guys go, you're dismissed. For you with no money, I'm gonna give you the best game on Vita, Persona 4 Gold. What you need to know about Persona 4 Golden is that it was given to me on the key, at the keynote today. A young gentleman, twitch.tv slash drain61 walked up and gave this to me to give to someone here. You get it. Thank you, drain61. And I hope you don't mind. I went a little bit further. I signed it. Troy Baker signed it. Laura Bailey signed it. So there you go. Hey, Greg, you're making my panel after this looks so bad. <laughs> we have an exclusive PS I Love You XOXO shirt. Nice. We've heard your, your calls for it. We will also have the PS I Love You poster, that, though not the one we sell in the store, the one we have behind us on the wall during the show, which is this logo. We'll also have the very famous uh, Ghostbusters one. And then, again, these are all exclusive. This is the only time you'll ever be able to get this shirt is tonight. We'll have this shirt. <laughs> he did come up to me and I took the a photo with someone in a shirt. Tisha said that Shuhei let us change our names. Right. <laughs> well. Yeah, what, what's up with that? <laughs> well. <laughs> You're gonna sit here with a straight face and tell me that Titus lied to us? Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I, I enjoy listening to stories in your podcast. <laughs> How people want to change their names, and uh, I don't want to ruin yours. <laughs> future. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you. We the did show, that to ourselves. The no, he, not he, dead. He, we, we were talking about that, you know, before when I was talking to Gio, just about, you know, he's keeping the dream alive, and we appreciate that. Yeah. But all the people that raised their hand in here that didn't have a Vita, well, thanks. It's on you. <laughs> it's all your fault. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. <laughs> 
really is the kind of technology, and you guys talk about this on the show, that you need to experience to really understand its potency, its relevance, what it can actually provide. I mean, you just, like talking about it, people are like, all right, well, it sounds pretty cool. Yeah. But when you actually try it and you let your mind start to get into it, you, you know, trick yourself, get the presence going, that's when you actually can be convinced of the potential of that platform and, and what PlayStation can bring to it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm convinced that I tweeted it out today during the conference or right after it that I'm getting, becoming more convinced that companies like Oculus and Sony will be very happy that they're getting into this game early, you know, in 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. I think that it's, it, it's I think Palmer Lucky is the one who said it, but it's true, like it is a religious experience. It, like, it really is, like, I, I, and I'm not into gimmicky games at all, and I don't think it's a gimmick, I think it's a new way of playing, you know, and uh, Eve Valkyrie is like, you know, like, <laughs> it has potential outside of gaming, which I think is gonna be really exciting too, but I think it's, gaming is gonna show it off and, and get it into people's homes, and then virtual tourism and all this kind of stuff is gonna, be huge. I don't know. I, I I can't imagine this not being big. You know, even if even if it if it's slow out the gate, this is this yeah. is going to be a thing. Uh, one <laughs> game now comes to mind now that I've been able to reflect properly, yeah. and I will share with you that title. I think all of you will agree. One hundred foot robot golf. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that looked pretty awesome, right? Uh, all right. On, I need honest applause and and yells. Who noticed the Evangelion references? <laughs> Yeah, actually, that was Sean Layden's favorite as well. He really? was sitting near, you know, behind me, and he was like, oh! So that's the trilogy of Tim's classic LucasArts games coming back for PlayStation 4 and Vita. Yeah. I, would, uh, I would pull out my Vita, and, as I did on the stage, and show it every time I say Vita, but I actually gave my Vita away to a fan. Tell this story. Yeah. Oh. Whoa. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I was, uh, some guy was, uh, you know, stopped me and said, great show, great show, and uh, I love it, but, you know, I'm really embarrassed to say, I, I, what's this Vita thing that everybody's talking about? And I'm like, wait, you, you're serious? You don't know what the Vita is? And he's like, no, and I'm like, it's, you know, we started going through it, and he was getting all excited and stuff, and I said, you know what? And I just pulled it out, and I erased my profile. I was just profile. About to ask. He's like, I, here you I, go. I erased Charge my, uh, whatever yeah. you want. Yeah. <laughs> erased my profile. I erased some incriminating photographs. And, Perfect. And, uh, yeah, and I passed it off. And, okay. And then gave him some games. Yeah. Hey, it's really nice. Come on. Stay strong, community. Stay strong. Believe. Believe. Believe in Shuhei Yoshida. Believe in the Vita. Also, is Matthew Lyle here? Nope. Matthew Lyle left his pass in here, fool, idiot. He's not getting back in tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, man. You can see the veins popping in your arm yeah. right there. That got that's, that's, that's Look at that strength. I can this, see it. This arm gets used a lot. This one, not so much. <laughs> huh. I'm sorry, Yoshida-san. But right now, give me a round of applause if you think Ryan should cancel his next panel and we keep going. Paul's an open chin! Paul's an open chin and let him know it's over! You know, all right. While I appreciate all of your guys' enthusiasm, that was very mean, and you all know it. You know, it was probably in the audience, like, weeping in a corner. And that will be the inspiration for his next game. Everyone's gonna stay. I posted a photo with Fat Princess Adventure hat. Then it's Tim's fault, I don't know. And someone photoshopped it oh. to make it neo. Then who photoshopped the human being on stage in a t-shirt shoe? <laughs> oh, that was, that was, you know, augmented reality. <laughs> John Lane walked on the stage, I'm like, oh, this is gonna be bad. You know, I didn't because, think they would do because, it. Well, no, they're definitely not gonna do it. No, I didn't think they would do this, the red herring. It's a total red herring, absolutely. You guys are real pieces of shit. <laughs> Thank you. We well, give I, you I, everything, Gio. We you. give you everything. Thanks for Thank having you. us Thank on the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yep. Um, PSX last year was my favorite show of the year, and PSX this year is my favorite show of this year. Mm. Yeah, there's a mountain and sea of passion and uh, love and some hate <laughs> to me, and I can feel it, and uh, it, it's awesome. Colin? I mean, let's be real, right? Like, we, we do kind of funny, and we cover everything we cover in Nintendo and Xbox and, and PlayStation, but these are our people. Yeah. And, you know, they, they, these are the people when we were at IGN that changed our lives yeah. with Podcast Beyond and with IGN PlayStation when we ran it. 
these are the ones, these are the ones that when we left to do our thing, they followed us. These are our people. Yeah. And so PSX is our best way to, com like to, to connect directly with the most hardcore kind yeah. of funny fans. Yeah. yeah. The short answer for me, which is rare, is that PSX is home. You know what I mean? Like we get to come hang out with our best friends and it never feels like it and we can do a panel where all we do is reference the PlayStation vlog and call, <laughs> prank call Genova Chen and everybody's like, that was great. <laughs> no content at all, but it was great. <laughs> that's our secret, no yeah. content. Yeah, well that's kind of funny.com in a nutshell. <laughs> From USA, representing Team Winter Fox, give it up for 801 Strider. All the way from China, make some noise for Dark. In this upcoming match, so I felt like he would be prepared, but so far this is me. All right, here's Kaoma now. Well, not, not a whole lot. Crouch tech turns into corner control now for Snake Eyes. Oh, and just catches him, yeah. Not quite it, but very close. Chip set up. Okay, so Kaoma goes for the backdash. Again, he can make this work. It's oh, yeah, possible. It is. He needs Tornado a couple more. Oh, looking for EX hand. Oh, what a great backdash to avoid that. That timing, James, that was the perfect time. The perfect place for the backdash. I think he needs something else. And started with the fear, so this will do a lot of damage, but you're right, not quite for, dead. For the jab. Oh! Snake Eyes definitely never bashful about using that meter. Just goes for the regular throw and then walk up SPD. That means it's match point for Red Bull Snake Eyes. Remember, he lost in the first match, of course, to KO Mar Snake Eyes dropping a combo there. Meant to get a stand short in the green hand, but didn't quite get it. Mm, yeah, punishable. Oh no. Snake Eyes not quite enough for EX. Oh, really? Ooh. Kaoman now with the life advantage. He's, he's faking the wheel kick. You saw that right there. He's hoping to convince Snake Eyes to react to something. And he wants it to be the wrong thing. Ooh, oh, they both did it! Can Snake Eyes find it? He just needs one button. Any of those jabs. Oh, That's good enough! Wow! Kaoma went for the sweep! I'm actually really surprised that, you know, he went for that. because. But the empty jump in the EX green hand is gonna pay off for Snake Eyes. And now Snake Eyes again at match point. Ooh, nice whiff punish. Wow, by sweep even. Oh, and he doesn't go into the green hand. This time he just goes for the SPD. What's the mix up? Trying to chase down the backdash. Didn't quite time the low short correctly. Kaoma has to be careful with building that meter. He wants the two bars, but Snake Eyes has been reacting to it very well. The two bars are so important for him right now that if he gets the step kick and he has two meters, you know, he's going to get the full ultra combo. Snake Eyes just trying to be at a range where he can react to things. See him sort of putting himself into the corner. We saw that happen in the first round and it did not pay off for him. Wow. He's still going for it. He's got enough meter if he lands the step kick now. Look, there's a lot of time on the clock. Oh, there it is. Snake Eyes is going to move on for the US and Kaoma from Brazil. I think everybody can agree that he did his country proud today. Oh, absolutely. And even though the audience here, you hear the USA chant. I think that's understandable. That's oh, where we yeah. are, but at the same time, you got to have a lot of respect for how Kaoma oh, yeah. performed. I think he really turned a lot of heads today. Yeah, I mean, honestly, everybody at home in Brazil watching this event, you yeah. know, they have to be so proud of what Kaoma has come and done. I think so. Took Shen to the brink and then uh, upset a lot of players, made it all the way here in the top eight. Round of applause for Brazil's Kaoma. Yeah. Cool. Oh, great. And he's going to get the ultra. Is that going to be enough? He's double ultra. No! Alive. The magic pixel! Daigo's got all the bars in the world. There's one guy you don't want to keep alive, Logan. This round is far from one for infiltration. This fight is not going to be back enough. He's now got that bar from the EX. Oh! Neutral jumps it. He's got to take this now again. He's walking forward. He's got super as well. He's got super as well, Logan. He could go for a demon. He could go for some kind of jumping. I don't know. Something's going to happen. He just needs to get across the screen. What's Daigo planning? Oh, that could be it! No! 
infiltration. Got no way at the moment of chipping him out from there. Oh! Oh, oh my days! Mr. B! Oh! oh my God. Oh, he's got the set up! Oh! The overhead! <laughs> infiltration just shakes his head from side to side. Daigo showing no emotion as always. Kazunoko has taken Capcom 20! Capcom yeah. Cup 2015! He is your champion! for potentially one of the last great major Ultra Street Fighter 4 tournaments, Kazunoko. Matt Dahlgren. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone give it up one more time for Kazunoko. It's not just this year's Capcom Cup champion, but the first fighting game player in history to walk away with a six-figure paycheck from a single win. It is a lot of money. Sure. A huge thank you to our friends at Sony uh, for producing this awesome stage, allowing us to collaborate here at PSX, and for our awesome partnership on Street Fighter V. I'm going to hand things over to executive producer on the Street Fighter franchise, the legendary Yoshinori Ono, for a special announcement. Thank you all. See you next year. <laughs> Street Fighter V. With a baseline prize pool of half a million dollars, the tour next year will kick off on March 18th with final round in Atlanta, Georgia, featuring Street Fighter V as the official game of the tour. So today I have some news that hasn't leaked yet, which I'm happy to share for you for the first time ever. We are pleased to announce that the team behind the live action series Street Fighter Assassin's Fist will be working on a special Street Fighter V web series for Machinima titled Street Fighter Resurrection. I have the very first teaser trailer here today, one that hasn't leaked, so let's take a look. We're going to be actively hiring development staff to join our team at Capcom Japan and USA. So all of you who have a passion for Street Fighter and want to work with us on the game, please apply and work together to make a better and brighter future for fighting games. And finally, last but not least, I do have one final trailer that hasn't leaked that I want to share with you all today. It's the opening cinematic to Street Fighter V. Let's take a look.
じゃあそれじゃあ皆さんそろそろ立ち上がる時間が来たようなので皆さんぜひ立ち上がってください Alright guys, this is the last thing we're gonna do the show here today. Please all stand up. We're gonna do a show you can together to close out the show. You guys know how to do this. じゃあ僕が three, two, one で皆さんぜひとも昇竜拳をやってください。I'm gonna count down three, two, one, and then we're all gonna show you can at once. Okay, you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, three. 